I heard we were working on John Wick, I was very excited because I was a huge fan of the movies. Looking at the films was not only was a fantastically choreographed action film, and Keanu Reeves is just amazing in those, but also in that world that they created. Let's do this. started out with Elliot and myself and Elliot was coming from a mechanical engineering background. I was wanting to make a change from mechanical engineering to game design. Um, I just felt like it was a natural progression for me. We got down to the basics, like you start every pinball machine, you start with a drawing, you start with concepts, you start with the themes. What are the cool mechs? What can we draw? What's like iconic about John Wick and just kind of add that into the play field. I think Elliot's got his own style. He had a pretty clear vision of how he wanted certain aspects of it to function. Well, I knew all along I wanted to do a two-flipper game, so I wanted to try to make that as fast action as possible. So like, I knew laying out the ramps and all this stuff had to be quick. At the end of the day, a pinball machine experience is only going to be about three minutes. So in that three minutes, you need to deliver a high energy, high intensity experience for the player. The first thing that struck me was the Continental as their main base of operations. I, want, I knew I wanted to put that in the game. The main concern was getting this, this Continental sculpt to look appropriate, but not dominating, but not minuscule. We put some cool lighting inside there with flash lamps so you could see more action inside the Continental. It was really cool to start from your sketching that you did and then get it to the point where you can shoot it out and try out all the geometry that you just laid down. and You learn a bunch of stuff. Like on this right side, I really want to massage this area to make it a little bit more forgiving. It's all kind of one big puzzle where like, yeah, just one piece here and it affects several pieces down over here or around an area. But that just is a lot of areas to change and update. And so yeah, it's a big snowball sometimes. We really loved all the dance club scenes from all the movies. They're always fighting in some kind of club with people. So you wanted to convey that action in a pinball context. The car and the dance club were two things that from day one everybody thought should be part of the game. It's iconic in the movies and we could do interesting things with it. This actually started as an upper play field, so I wanted to have some sort of combat area where, you know, you have close quarters. I'd have a, oh yeah, sort of an exit that would feed it this way. And I tried several different iterations of whatever to make it kind of cool. Then I'm like, eh, it's not as dynamic as what I'd like it to be. So I'm like, okay, let's sink it down so we can shoot straight into it. The pop bumper is a little bit unique. A lot of those captive balls don't have that in it. And Elliot was looking for a lot of action in that area. There's a lot of driving sequences in the John Wick films, and he's often driving these muscle cars from the 70s. He seems to be a connoisseur. So we actually have a physical sculpted car, and so like this is our basic blocky stuff right now. You'll be able to hit it, and then a certain number of hits, it'll like actually drive forward. I really wanted to make it look like it was doing a fishtail. We had never done anything that fast before. It was really challenged making it reliable so that it wasn't burning out motors or system components or whatever. We centered it all around, there's one car, but there's four multi-balls that you can progress to in just the one car mechanism. And each one represents a different driving sequence from each movie. One of my goals really was taking this cool car mech and trying to use it as much as possible during gameplay. So like, for example, there's a scene in the movie I really enjoyed where Wick gets hit. He climbs out of the car and he's like hiding behind it and then uh, defeating bad guys. So during that multi-ball, you reach a point where the car kind of drives out like that and you have to bash it a few times. Some of the clips from the movie, we recreated that in 3D. George Gomez created a version of the car for the play field. So we actually took that exact model and created a, a digital version and recreated the taxi cab chase.
watching the John Wick films, I liked how they had this blood oath marker that they would open up. We had this uh, sculpt on the play field from uh, Elliot and the team that would open up and show fingerprints inside. So we decided to bring that in and Lionsgate sent us a prop from John Wick that we were able to scan and recreate in 3D to put on the game. The marker wound up turning into the ball save rule where if you activate the marker and drain down one of the outlaying drains, you get your ball back, but then you're stuck in a blood oath. And then now you have to fulfill an obligation in return in order to free yourself from the blood oath. I wanted to make the player feel like they were signing a deal with the devil. Actions have consequences. I watched all four John Wick films many times. I identified the, the film clips we needed, but I wanted to use the entire film sequences. So in order to bring that all together on a pinball machine, I created a new type of video player that we call the action video player, which is keeping track of the player's progress. And it's playing the scene in a way that's connected to the player's actions on the play field. The movie clips will be playing from beginning to end and basically catch up with the player's progress. So as you defeat three enemies, you'll watch the display and you'll see John Wick defeat three enemies. You feel like you're controlling it because it has a video game feel. We just took inspiration by the film itself and what they're doing. They do a lot of realism, really grungy style. Uh, and I noticed there's a lot of macro shots being used. So we have a coin that's flipping through and all that. So we use Blender for that to really get the good details of, of that object. That was a big thing when we went to the art direction. We wanted to make it feel like it was from the movies. John Wick doesn't speak too much, but when he does, we do have that speech from the movie. Like, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. There's another one, Jonathan. Ian McShane performed speech as his character, Winston. Over in London, Ian McShane came to the studio. We had a great recording session, and he just delivered immediately a great performance that works really well in the pinball machine. Feels so authentic to have Ian McShane bring his talent to the game. Rules. Without them, we live with the animals. Back in 2022, Elliot, Jody, and I sat down with Charlie Benante to talk about doing the soundtrack for a John Wick pinball machine. Charlie said, let me go watch the movies. Let me get my head around the property. And I said, sure. I wrote pretty much most of the songs for Anthrax. And with this, I collaborated with Andy Lagus, my friend and partner. We put this soundtrack together and we just busted our ass doing it because we wanted it to be great, you know, just like, it's gotta be great. I gave him some notes on like, you know, watch this scene to get some inspiration. I want, you know, a catacombs underground in Rome scene. I want some music for that. He definitely guided me towards a certain tone or a certain sound. Some songs were kind of in that, what I call that kind of swampy type of tone. Uh, and then some were very dance techno-ish, you know, that cinematic, sound, a lot of the tones that are in the movie reflect the scene of the movie. So if it's a fighting scene, the music is really upbeat and stuff like that. So that's exactly how we tried to capture it. We had to watch because sometimes we'd get carried away and the song would end up being six minutes and it's like, we got to cut this down. And we are doing a limited edition vinyl John Wick pinball soundtrack available only at Comic-Con. I will be there signing the soundtrack too. Music and lighting they sell the moment you're trying to capture. You can have a bash toy that just, you hit it, and it'll be exciting for a little bit, but if it has the sound and the lighting right behind it, well, it's just such a bigger moment than you ever expected. One thing I really loved about the John Wick films is that the, the colors really just set one location out from the next. What we like to call neon noir. So I really wanted the expression lights on this game so we could mimic that dramatic lighting they do. So every time you start a mode or every time you start a multi-ball, they'll change different colors associated with the scene. It kind of sets the mood a bit. With Insider Connected, things are always changing and evolving. What we're doing for John Wick, which we've never done before with Insider Connected, is we've introduced objective-based contracts. Just like in the John Wick films, you'll be issued exclusive contracts where it's a race to see who can be the first person to take on the administration's challenge. So we're here at San Diego Comic-Con at the Stern booth where they have John Wick pinballed. And uh, the props, 
are really cool. People checking them out behind the glass cases there. They're from the movies. So one of my favorite things to do is seeing people play the pinball machines that I illustrate. It's really cool. So we're at Comic-Con and there was something in the air that Keanu was gonna come by. Sure enough, Keanu shows up and starts playing the game and, and hanging and then started talking and everything and he enjoyed the game. And from what I hear, he's a huge pinball fan. He could definitely play pinball. Look at that! Oh, so for him to be playing the John Wick game at Comic-Con, it was just like, can this thing get any better? Every game that I've worked on up until this point has always had that magic moment where you go from Whitewood to art to then now speech and sound where the game, I like to call it the game kind of comes to life. And then when you get there, you're always like, wow, this is so much cooler than I ever expected. It's badass, it's fast, it's cinematic. I think this layout and the way the shots flow are really Elliot's style. If you're a fan of John Wick, then it's a must to have this in your house or your office or your bathroom. I don't care, wherever you want to put it. We get awesome animations, we get awesome video clips from the game, awesome sound effects, driving music. It all comes together to an action-packed pinball experience. Everything just feels like it should. We used to be friends with Keanu. He came to the Chicago show when we played and he was in a suit and he was in the pit and just going nuts. And it was always something that stuck out in my mind. It's like, wow, nice dressed man in the pit. <laughs> <laughs>